Hi and welcome back to the Business Career College video series. In this video we're going to go through an introduction to our legal system in Canada This video would be useful for pretty much anybody getting ready for any financial services exam. Uh, we'll also be building some continuing education courses as I include this video. And if you're looking to understand insurance law or securities law or family law or estate law, all of which are important elements of the financial services industry, this video would be a useful starting point. So we're going to break this down into five elements that we'll discuss. We're going to briefly discuss the common law and what it means. We're going to look at statute law and understand what statute law consists of and where it comes from. We're going to look at the role of the courts. We're going to look at the role of our elected government in this process. And we're going to look at the role of self-regulatory organizations or SROs. These self-regulatory organizations fill a fairly important role in the financial services sector in Canada. So the common law to start. The common law dates back to roughly the 1150s and what we saw here was an attempt to create one common set of laws where previously there had been none and the basic idea here was to bring together the laws that were being used in different parts of the land into one common system. So under a common law system, we're going to put heavy stock in what's called precedent law, or sometimes we refer to this as case law. And that stands in opposition, roughly, to other systems of law, including uh, case law, or sometimes we call this, sorry, code law. Sorry, it stands in opposition to code law, or sometimes we refer to this as Napoleonic law. or sometimes civil law. And of course in Canada we do have this practiced in Quebec. And this is pretty common in other parts of the world too that have their origins back to the French colonial tradition. And we have other alternatives too such as the law of equity or laws of equity. And we still do have some laws of equity practiced in Canada. We sometimes find this when we have civil damages awards, for example, the law of equity is really an attempt to put both parties in a position that's fair relative to their problem or to their concern. Unlike then these other two sets of laws, the main concern around precedent law or case law is predictability. And this focus on predictability is designed to allow commerce to occur. So the idea here is that in a case law system, we have a fairly easy time conducting business because we know if we go to court, what the outcome will be based on what's happened previously. Now, statute law, this is where we are starting from for the purpose of most legal discussions. This is our written set of laws. So we're going to have written laws here, such as the Income Tax Act or our Criminal Code. So this is our written set of laws. And these written laws then provide the basis for um, most discussions around how the law is going to work. And what generally happens then is when we have a gap here, that's when we have to refer back to the common law. So the common law gives us a body of case law that we can draw on to make a determination about how a particular matter might be handled when our statute law 
doesn't adequately address that. And then we can look at the role of the courts. So the courts in Canada are part of the various departments of justice, either at the federal level or at the provincial level, and their role is the enforcement of our laws as written. So what happens then is if we have a, a matter at the provincial level, and we do have to understand that there are differences here, section 91 of the Constitution Act of 1867 tells us what falls under federal authority, and section 92 tells us what falls under provincial authority. It is important to understand the differences here. Uh, for example, most securities and insurance matters fall under issues of provincial authority. Most income tax questions fall under federal authority, although there are provincial authorities for the collection and administration of our income tax legislation. So what we're going to have then is the courts are going to deal with this at a number of different levels depending on the type of question. If we have a tort that is an issue where one party feels that they've had harm done to them by another party in a financial or physical or reputation sense, then the courts may get involved. So a tort is sort of our fancy name for a lawsuit. And what happens here is one party sues another and most of these matters would start off at the provincial superior or supreme court or the court of queen's bench whatever word we happen to use for it and it's sort of a misnomer when we talk about a superior or supreme court here this is the first level of court you would deal with in most lawsuits from there if the parties are not satisfied, they may end up at a provincial court of appeal. And these are really the two provincial courts with which we're primarily concerned. And from there, we may end up at the Supreme Court of Canada, which is quite rare. It's not very common for cases to end up at the Supreme Court of Canada. They'll typically see somewhere between about 50 to 75, definitely less than 100, cases that arise from provincial superior courts originally in a year and they're generally going to choose cases that are of national interest or cases where there's uh, some key question that the Supreme Court feels is important. They're not just going to choose cases, cases on the basis of an amount of money at stake or something like that. And then we look at elected government so the role of elected government here is to pass new laws. So what will sometimes happen then is we may have a case that goes to, let's say, a provincial court of appeal or all the way to the Supreme Court, and maybe our current government is not happy with that or the current government is somehow compelled to step up and take some role with respect to this. So they will say, okay, we're going to write a law And that law creates some clarity where otherwise we'd have to refer to precedent or whatever the case is. So we're trying to maybe create some clarity or establish policy. And sometimes we have scenarios where the government is happy with the decision made by the Supreme Court. Uh, currently, as of 2014, we have, of course, a fairly high profile uh, level set of disputes between our Supreme Court and our current federal government. And then we have self regulatory organizations. So, what happens here is that some authority. So somebody, either Department of Justice or otherwise, will devolve some authority. So some level of government says, we don't want to deal with every routine administrative matter, or we don't want to deal with items that are of relatively low concern. So we're going to devolve certain authority to 
a self-regulatory organization, an SRO. And these SROs, these are industry organizations. And these industry organizations are going to then take responsibility for the more sort of routine or regular matters so that government doesn't have to get involved with with these little items with every nitpicky little thing that comes up. So we're just going to pass on responsibility for routine administrative matters. And we have a couple examples of SROs in this country, the MFDA, the Mutual Fund Dealers Association, or IROC as well, are examples of securities SROs. So the MFDA deals with most matters concerning um, just the routine practice of mutual fund dealers. And then in the four western provinces as well, we have the insurance councils. So they do, both MFDA and the insurance councils, create um, regulation that has the force of law, but they are somewhat limited in their authority. They really are limited to be able to deal with those routine administrative matters. So we're going to delve into some of these in more detail as we push forward, but this provides us with a brief overview of the Canadian legal system. I hope this is helpful. Enjoy your continued studies. Thank you very much.